Neil, first of all, what's your assessment of the way VR is working out this season? Yeah, well, we're 12 match rounds in, Tony, and generally from from how we've started, I'm really comfortable. Uh, I know there's been quite numerous criticism from people out there, but we knew it wasn't going to be an easy journey. We know that the scrutiny uh, the Premier League is under, as in from the match officials' point of view, and... Uh, we know it's work in progress. I mean, prior to the season starting, we've done as much educational briefing as possible to media broadcasters, etc., to, to to try and tell them how we're going to operate with it. And uh, to a certain extent, because it's so new and it's such a big difference to officiating, people are expecting everything to be, you know, hit the ground running, it's going to be perfect, every decision is going to be absolutely spot on. But we've preached all along that you're never going to get 100% accuracy even with VAR, because there's just too much subjectivity within football decisions. Yeah, uh, particularly at the weekend, actually. I'll come to that in a second. Yep. But has it then surprised you, the amount of anger that fans have had? to? Cause they've already got songs about VAR. Yep. I was at a, gra a ground <laughs> yeah. on Saturday and they were singing it. Gary Lineker's tweeted the sick of VAR. Yep. Has that taken you back a little bit? Uh, not really, no. We, we did expect a certain amount of uh, media coverage and certainly criticism as well. I'm, I mean... When you're a match official anyway, from, from whenever you, you, you put on that you, the first time you wear that, that black shirt and go out and officiate, you get used to criticism. It's because you're never going to please everyone. That's that's always been the case. So going with VR, we knew there was going to be another element to that as well uh, b because of the scrutiny it's under. People sometimes don't like change. They've watched football on television for years and years with just referees refereeing. But it, it was kind of... People out there, not referees, it was people out there saying, why aren't referees using video technology now? We've got all this technology, why don't they use it? So it's, that's, that's how it kind of first started out. So we are utilising it now, but people are looking for perfect decisions and you're never going to get that. Yeah, I, I do see that. I mean, for example, my, my team Burnley had their second goal disallowed at the weekend, it was a cracking goal, but but uh, by all counts, it was offside. And I, and I, I wouldn't. I'm just. I suppose the anger's reflected at VAR and not the linesman, as it would have been normal if the linesman had a flag. The fans would have had a go at him, and everyone would have moved on. So VAR's that target, and I supported it before it came in. I just want to particularly whether, and I know you're a football fan, so I wonder if you see just something of the spirit. An unintended consequence of VAR is that now people just hesitate when Burnley scored their third. We just waited a little bit before we went bonkers. We were looking, where's the ref going? What's happening? Has he got his finger in his ear? Do, do you worry that little spirit of the game's gone, that that instantaneous eruption? Yeah, I can understand that point of view from the from the fans without doubt. But generally, all VAR is doing is making more correct decisions, which is what people wanted. We're still saying go out and celebrate. I mean, percentage-wise, I mean, we've, we've, all, we've had 29 overturns in 12 match rounds. And I'm not sure that how many of them have been offside. But generally, when a goal goal scored, just go and celebrate it. There will be that odd occasion that we do disallow it at yeah. Ala, Ala Burnley at the weekend. Do you know but, any stats about whether you've stopped more goals or, or given more goals? Is, is there a stat that you can quote like that? Uh, and I know so far that in the 12 match rounds, we've disallowed more than, right. than, than with the we've allowed but I mean when you look at that when we train our assistant referees obviously when they do the you know when when they sit down with their coaches and stuff like that they go through it they're told you know if it's tight they're going to keep the flag down anyway that's yeah. because pre VAR benefited doubt should go to the attacker that's what they always said yeah. but obviously that changes with VAR from it just becomes now more factual doesn't it we, we've got black and white lines or red and blue lines, as, yeah. as you will, yeah. showing us definitive positions of where the players are when the ball's been played. It's tough for a fan, though, to see that an armpit has cost their side a goal. But you, I suppose if you argue logically, offside's offside. Well, we can only work within the laws yeah. of the game. Whether that changes going forward, Tony, who knows? But, you know, at the moment, if any part of the body that can score a goal is closer to the goal line than the second rear most defender, you're offside. That's what we're working with. Yeah. Will I fab look at the offside law going forward with VAR being used and think, oh, we need to have an, an element, you know, a, a deviation or, or whatever? But in saying that, you're still always going to have that problem. If you say that, we'll allow a foot, you know, you can, you can be a foot 
offside, what happens if you're a foot in a couple of inches, yeah. or an inch? You know, no, you're I, still I, always going to get I see, that. I see it's got to be black and white. What about just... What about other issues, though? Uh, there's a perception amongst fans that it's just clear and obvious errors you're looking for. But then if a goal is scored, you're worried that they might go back for a handball 35 seconds or so ago. Is there, is there a cut-off? Is it arbitrary, no. these the, the, these decisions? Well, well when, we, when we did we, we're briefings uh, prior to the season, the educational part, we, we talked about the attacking phase of play, which is constantly being set by the VAI. We got a, a real lot of good feedback from the clubs on that, and they were saying they only want us to look at that immediate phase when a goal scored. But once again, there's subjectivity within that. You know, things that we look at are as the defence had the ability to reset in yeah. certain situations, have they controlled the ball? So you know, we look at all that, and there's always going to be elements that people are going to disagree. You, with you've mentioned that. the ruling body who oversee it. Would you change anything now if you could press a magic button? Reference VAR. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, no, because I think in, for us it's too early. Going forward, would I like to use uh, audio communication like other sports do? I, I, so I let think, fans know. Yeah, I think I right. probably would. Right. But at this moment in time, and I, I completely understand and I agree why IFAB aren't allowing that. We're, we're told Mike Riley uh, may be considering pushing the referees to use the monitors more. My pet theory of why they don't is because their job's easier now because if any players surround them, they can just point to their ears and say, nothing to do with me, it's back in Stockley Park. Is that is that the reason why they've not been using the monitors to make their lives easier? Now, the main reason why, we, and once again, this is when we talk to clubs and uh, stakeholders within the game, the Premier League's based on pace, intensity, tempo, uh, and they were looking for the, the best way to, to utilise VR with taking as little time out of the game as possible. So we've looked at other competitions who use the monitor, and there's no doubt about it, it's fine. When you go over to use the monitor, you take more time out of the game. But that, when I've watched it happen in Europe, it's been shorter periods than it has been listening, waiting for Stockley Park to make a, to, to make a decision, it in, seems in, to me. In, well, in cer some circumstances, uh, I will agree with that, but generally, it takes longer to, to go over to the screen. So it's a work in progress. It's not Absolutely. going anywhere. So, do, do, so you would prefer to have the referee's voice heard in the stadium? Well, that well, all I'm saying on that is going forward. Yeah, certainly not now. It's no, I'm talking soon, about tweaks but, for the but, future. But going forward, I think that would help. And, and the reason I say that is because it's I love watching cricket, and it's helped me when I watch cricket now to be able to hear the the third umpire make comments, and you know ask exactly what he wants wants to see with the ball tracking, front foot, etc. So I think that enhances watching uh, the video technology with, with the cricket. Right. And I think going forward, that, so, that would help the, the support. Hear the voice, watch the picture on the screen. The fans will be able to see that, the rocking and rolling, the offside and all that kind of thing. Hopefully you can try and shorten it. And, and monitors, are they going to are they going to be used? Well, once again, that's... We'll, we'll take feedback on that. The stakeholders meet. Why haven't they been used here? What's your theory on that? The reason being, Timing when, when we first started, there's a lot of trust between the uh, the match officials. We've worked together nearly three years on that. So when you're refereeing a game, if your colleagues saying that you've made a clear and obvious error, you know, you've just called it wrong, he's happy to take that on board and just go, yeah, fine, I'm okay with that. Yeah. TV screen. And because, but that, that back to my original point, that gets him off the hook with the players, doesn't it? They're not going to be in his ear all game because he can just say, oh, it's Stockley well, Park, mate. there is that aspect So do you think that's well, a yeah. human nature thing that they're relying, or they'd rather a third party made that decision than they, they at the monitor? Well, that's certainly an aspect towards it, yeah. Self-protection. Yeah. But in saying that, in, in other competitions where they do use it, the referee goes over He'll look at it, come back and make his decision on that. And in, in Europe, when I've seen that happen, there seems to be less uproar in the stadium when the refs, the man in the middle's gone over and made that decision yeah. rather than someone in a... In a, in a yeah, once, once again, cabinet. there's. I've seen different examples. I've seen examples where the referee goes over and he, he's changed his decision and there's been no reaction on the field of play, but I've seen it as well where... It, you know, when he's changed his decision, there's been massive reactions. So it, it, I think it all depends uh, on the type of incident it is as well. As you say, final question, you, as a ref, you've you've had it in the neck on numerous occasions, I yeah. would imagine. 
now VAR's getting in. You, well, you have. I'm, yeah, I mean, not, not, I'm sure not every of, decision God, you made was on the part of for yeah. Tony, but yeah. yeah, you're right. So now there's a new three letter word, VAR, instead of the ref. So you yeah. think all this anger would just be at the officials anyway? It's just it's just directed at VAR. So nothing to see here is what you're saying. That's right. Because it's new, there's always going to be that scrutiny on it, without doubt, yeah. And people are looking to vent their anger somewhere. VAR is the, the, the new kid on the block, if you will, and, and that's where, where people are looking at. 